Solving equations by factoring. Do you know who I am? <laughs> All right, now, I'm going to solve equations by factoring. The objective is, well, to use factoring in solving equations. What are you talking about? Well, let's see. Let's talk about the zero product property, and maybe this will help us out a little bit. All right, the zero product property says if a times b equals zero, oh, sorry, it says a times b equals zero if, and that double f means if and only if, a equals zero or b equals zero, and obviously or both equals zero. For example, if I know that five times x is zero, I know x must be zero. I know one of these must be zero. Five is not zero, x must be zero. When you have a product that equals zero, one part of that product, one of the factors, must be zero. That factor is five. This factor must be zero. Here's another one. Three times some number equals zero. Well, that some number must be zero. This x minus two must be zero, which means if x minus two must be zero, x must be two. So if I was going to solve for x in this equation, I know that x must be two. And if you do it the old, you know, if you, you guys have seen similar to this, if I distribute it, I get 3x minus 6 equals 0. I'd add 6 to both sides. I get 3x equals 2. X must, sorry, 3x equals 6, so x must equal 2. But we can, we don't have to go through all that. We can see I have, a, I have a product. One of these factors must be 0. Make one of the factors 0. Set it equal to 0. Here I set it equal to 0, so x must be 2, because look at I put a 2 in. 2 minus 2 is 0. 3 times 0 is 0. Sweet. And this last one, now I have, again, two factors. One of these must be 0. <coughs> Either one can be zero. So, so is there a way that I can make this one zero? So I say what minus four would make that zero? So let's see, hmm, how about four? If I put a four in there, won't this term, won't this factor become zero? Four minus four is zero, and zero times no matter what this is. Okay, if this was four, this becomes 10. Won't zero times 10 still be zero? Remember, when we're solving, we're just trying to make it true. So this is a true statement when x equals four. But this is also a true statement if the second factor was 0. Now this will be 0 when x is negative 6, right? Let's see, negative 6 plus 6 would make this 0. And if x was negative 6, I'd have negative 6 and negative 4, I'd have negative 10. Is it negative 10 times 0 also? Sure, so x could also be negative 6. The way you can solve that is you can actually set these each individually equal to 0 and find out. We can make a little mini equation x minus 4 equals 0, add 4 to both sides, x equals 4. x plus 6 equals 0, and minus 6 from both sides, x equals negative 6. But either way, you're going to find out that um, making the, the, the key in solving these problems by factoring, these equations, sorry, by factoring, is by setting one of the factors equal to 0. So here we go. Solve for n. All right, let's see. Um, zero product property. I have three factors. This times this times this must equal 0. So if any three of these is zero, then this whole thing, then, then this is a true statement. The whole thing will become zero. So what would make 5n zero? What would n have to be? How about zero? Let's see. 5 times zero, yes, that's zero. Zero times whatever these two things will make it zero. So n equals zero must be one of my solutions. What would make the second term zero? Well, what minus three equals zero? Um, how about three? Three minus, yes. 3 minus 3 would be 0. This would be 15. 15 times 0 times negative 1 equals 0. No matter what the other two terms are, this 0, 0 of them makes nothing. There'll be nothing left. And this one would be 4. So the three solutions, there are three zeros. They're often called solutions to solving these. They're called the zeros of them. Well, they make it 0. Another, they're also called the um, roots of these things. And we'll talk about that later on. It's actually where the graph of these things. Um, if you graph these guys, it's, it's the places where it goes through the x-axis, and this would go through at 0, sorry, at 0, 3, and 4, so it would look a little funky. We'll talk about that later on, graphing uh, quadratics and cubics. Now, let's go to this one. We've got to solve this one. Well, this isn't as easy as the other one, so can I set it up? Can I factor it and then set those factors equal to 0? Certainly. I've been factoring all day. All right. So let's see, can I factor this guy? Um, all right, let's see, 24, right? Negative 24. Are there two numbers whose product's negative 24 and whose sum is 5? Um, let's see, 8, how about negative 8 and 3, right? I'm oh, sorry, negative 3 and 8. So I get 2x squared 
minus 3x plus 8x minus 12, right? Negative 3 and 8. Add to 5 and multiply to 24. There we go. All right. Um, and what can I factor out of this guy? How about an x out of here? And I get 2 minus 2x minus 3. And what can I factor out of the left side? How about a 4? I get 2x minus 3. So I get x plus 4, 2x minus 3 equals 0. So if this, when this is 0 or this is 0, this will be a true statement. So let's do them both. x plus 4 equals 0 when x equals negative 4. There's one of my solutions. And here, 2x minus 3 is equal to 0 when 2x is equal to 3 or when x is equal to 1 and a half. I just divided both sides by 2. So there's my two solutions. All right. So remember what we want to do is we want to get some, we want some polynomial equal to zero. So we got to be, you know, figure out how we get them all on one side. So let's bring these guys over and we end up with r squared minus 10r plus 9 equals zero. All right. Perfect square trinomial. Let's see. Um, r, 3, no, it's not going to be a perfect square trinomial. Let's see, are there two numbers whose, let's go to some product. Um, it's not a difference of two squares, obviously no monomial factors. Let's see, two numbers who multiply to get 9 and add to get negative 10. How about negative 9, negative 1? So I get r minus 9, r minus 1. Let's double check. Negative 9, uh, yeah, 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 it works. So this equals 0 when either of these equals 0. This guy obviously equals 0 when r equals 9. And just look at this guy and you can tell when r equals 1. So my two solutions are 9 and 1. All right, let's go to another one. Here we go. 4x squared minus 9 equals 0. Difference of two squares. 2x plus 3. 2x minus 3. Right off the bat, that equals 0. Can I factor it anymore? No. When is this true? Well, let's see. Well, when 2x plus 3 equals 0, when this term is 0, it'll cancel that out, and this will be a true statement. So when 2x equals negative 3, oh, when x equals negative 3 halves, negative 1 and 1 half. And, or when 2x minus 3 equals 0, and 2x equals 3. So when x equals positive 1 and a half. So when x equals negative 1 and a half or positive 1 and a half, this statement will be true. All right? 4 times 1 and a half squared minus 9. All right. Let's go on. Let's do one more, two more. See how much what we have time for. All right. Let's solve this one. Let's get... You have... Do, 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 almost done here. Got a couple minutes. 6h squared minus 17h plus 12 equals 0. All right, perfect square trinomial. No, any common no, 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 no. All right, so I can start listing the, I can do the list method. Let's do the list method. Last time we did this one, so let's do the list here. We have um, 1, 6, and 2, 3, right? And we have a sum, both going to be negative. So we have um, 1, 12, 2, 6, 3, 4, right? Um, so let's see when our sum is going to be 17. 6 and 12, no. 12 and 6, no. 18 and 4, no. Let's see, 3 and 24, no. 6 and 12, no. 9 and 8, ooh, 9 and 8, look at that, there we go. So both going to be negative, right? Negative 9, negative 8 gives me my negative 17. So I'm going to have 2h over here, 3h over here, negative 3 here, negative 4 here. Double check, make sure. Do a negative 9h, negative 8h, yep. I have my 6h squared, negative 12. All right, it's working out. Good. So set each of these equal to 0, and 3h minus 4 equals 0, and that's my solution. So 2h equals 3, or h equals 3 halves, or 1 and a half. And 3h equals 4, or h equals 4 thirds, right? And finally, I've got one more, like 30 seconds to do this one. So I get y4 minus 10y squared plus 9 equals 0. So this is going to be negative 9, negative 1. It's going to be y squared plus 9. Um, sorry, y squared minus 9, y squared minus 1. And you're going to factor this at a y plus 1, y minus 1, y plus 3 y minus 3. So there's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 solutions, okay? And you're going to have a plus 1, negative 1, plus 3, negative 3, and that's how that guy works out. That's crazy, crazy, crazy!